And our future is bright with our uh, leadership here in Lawndale. Again, the mayor of the 24th Ward, give her a hand, Monique Scott. And I didn't make that up. When Mayor Daley was mayor, he used to tell every alderman to run their own ward as if they were mayor. And so Monique Scott is uh, kind of doing it that way. She's making sure this ward is clean, trees are cut, and things are happening. And we're excited about her being the alderman over here. I, didn't, I never saw it coming, but I'm glad it did. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We want to thank God for everybody that has come out. I really should not be here talking right now. This is not my time. But I just kind of want to bring some kind of order in here because it's just kind of chaotic and, uh, and it's getting tighter and tighter. Uh, I don't think any more people can fit under this tent. So everybody else is going to just kind of try to hear on the outside. The great thing about tents, these walls open up in the event of an emergency. Okay, but our mayor is on the way and he's a few minutes away and he's going to come and when he comes we're going to kick the program off because we certainly do not want to start this program without him in attendance because I want you all to know that he, paid, he played a major role in the fact that we are here today uh, and I, I thank and praise God for his foresight and for his desire to bring uh, sustainable and affordable housing uh, to the city of Chicago especially to the west side come on let's give the mayor a hand, let's give the mayor a hand. so I'm just gonna kind of take my seat and uh, we're gonna let a little music play in a few minutes he'll be here and uh, I just want to thank he here all right yeah. He need to put me on payroll, don't he? <laughs> I worked that thing right out. I want to thank God for our congressman uh, who is uh, always on the case for us in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, he sent a representative here, one of which we don't just thank God for her and the work that she does for us uh, in our congressional district, but we thank God for her being a woman of God, a sister, and a friend. We thank God for Sharita Logan. Woo! I am so excited. I was reaching out trying to get the Secretary of Hood, so I had my cousin who runs around with those people from Detroit uh, over the shot news, Gary Hunter, uh, reaching out, and I had the congressman reaching out, and I didn't really have to reach for uh, to get really get the real Hood voice that I needed because we had one right here in the city of Chicago, and we want to thank God for our local regional director here in the house today, and I haven't learned her name yet, but I'm going to learn it. Diane Tell me the name. Diane Shelley. Diane Shelley. Come on, give... Diane Shelley, a hand. Thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, uh, building and fostering a, a relationship with you so that we can continue projects like this. And when it's my turn to really talk, I'll tell y'all why I'm talking like I'm talking. All right? All right? All right. I want to thank God for our uh, deputy mayor that is in the house. Give our deputy mayor a hand. And uh, love our deputy mayor because my alderman told me a little secret about it. Is this the one? from the west she from the west side she from Lawndale and y'all know I love everything from the west side in Lawndale but I also love Chicago as a whole y'all know that's right that's why my friend and brother coming in the room right now y'all give our mayor hand Mayor Brandon Johnson yeah west side <laughs> actually I can't say that because I'm a pastor I have to love all the sides of Chicago I'm telling y'all that now look so I can step down now and uh, uh, in the interest of time, we're going to fast track this. I want to bring you all a man that I respect, I love. He is a mentor. He is a brother. Uh, he is a father figure for me. He is uh, a pastor. And he is a leader uh, par excellence. And he has served uh, well the, uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, he's a retired house. I want y'all to put your hands together for the pastor of the Living Faith Church, uh, Pastor Larry S. Bullock. Retired house, my past. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, hold it, hold it. Hold it. They just gave me the script. Hold it, hold it. Let me tell y'all something. The most important person in this tent is right here to my right. Y'all give my beautiful wife a hand. Terry Ann. <laughs> Well, the good news is protocol has already been established. Uh, the better news is that we're all here today and God sent us a beautiful day because every day that ends in Y is a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. But I've been told that my job is to direct traffic, which I intend to do, and there will be no traffic violations issued, and if they are, the mayor will have to do it. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to move immediately to 
sounding the bugle, blowing the shofar, and calling upon the God who has created the heavens and the earth. And I can think of no better person to do that as the invocation than the lady that was last introduced by Reverend Marvin Hunter. Uh, God sent him an appetizer from heaven, and so the Reverend Terry Tunner will come and bring us the invocation. Reverend Terry. Amen. God bless. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As it was stated, my name is First Lady Reverend Terry Hunter, and I'm here on assignment, yes. and that is to give the invocation of this wonderful celebration on this 11th day, 12th month in our year of our Lord God of 2023. Yes. There are many biblical scriptures in the Bible that it pertains to groundbreaking ceremonies for constructions of new buildings. But there are two that I felt to be most importantly appropriate for today's event. Hosea 10 and 12 and Jeremiah 4 and 3. Both of them are synonymous one to the other that they state that we should break up the fallow ground, <laughs> hence making today's celebration divine. Yes. Let us pray with bowed heads. Say you pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. we come to you on this beautiful, sunshiny day. Thank you. Just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for rising us up this morning. Mm keeping us safe as we slept last night yes. but yet made our way out on this day yes. we thank you for your hands of protection yes. god we thank you for the reason of the gathering yes. of today's event god i first just want to say thank you again yes. lord we ask that you bless right now yes. this ceremony bless it from the start to the end God, we ask that you bless the visionary, mm. Pastor Marvin G. Hunter, Amen. who had the desire, who had the insight, and who has the wisdom to hear you speak to him as it pertains to this venture. And God, bless him also mm. for his courage to follow your lead. Yes. God, we ask that you bless right now mm. every political individual who's represented here on today from the governor to the u.s congressman to the cook county board president to our honorable wonderful mayor johnson to our state representative to our older woman and all other political individuals who are here whether in present or in spirit but are here to say and be a part of this this venture to give you the glory. Bless every religious leader who mm. is here today. Yes. God bless them for coming together. Bless the Grace Memorial family. Yes, bless every strategic partner mm. who yes, came today, Thank who you. brought in their time, their effort, God, mm. their insight, their wisdom. Yes. God bless right now, right now, like only you can bless. Bless the families right now. Bless this community. Bless this community and the families right now who will be helped by and through this project. Yes. God, we forever give your name the praise. Yes. God, we forever give your name the glory. Yeah. And God, we forever give your name the honor. Thank For you. in you we live, in yeah. you we yeah. breathe, and in you we have our being. And God, we thank you right thank you. now in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus. And as we go forth in this celebration, God, we claim victory in it. Yes. We claim peace in it. We can claim mm. unity in this celebration and the building to come. And we'll forever give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor in the matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it is so. And so it is. Let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Uh, he really, uh, Thank you, God. he really married, he really married above himself. That's for sure. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I know because I got one. Uh, we do have a master. Uh, the gentleman, uh, where is he? Supposed to introduce. 
Do you want me to proceed on? The presentation of the National Anthem. Okay, want me to do that? Okay. Well, you know, I used to be an AME, and now I'm a full gospel preacher. And they taught us in the AME church, Pastor Hunter laughs at me all the time, about respecting protocol. And I was told I was to come up after the invocation, so forth, etc. So you all must excuse me if I stumble a little bit, and it's not because I'm illiterate. Uh, <laughs> at this time, we're going to have the presentation of the national anthem to be followed by what we call the black national anthem, the Negro national anthem, whatever makes you feel comfortable. So at this time, we're going to have the presentation and the uh, singing of the national anthem. Amen. 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 My baby, y'all. <laughs> Which one are we going first? I'm going first. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the And the rockets red glare, the bomb bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does their star spangled Everybody to join in and put your right hand across your chest and sing a little, a, a couple of verses of Lift Every Voice. Amen, amen, amen. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoice. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful. That's, that's one of your grandchildren. <laughs> You know, one of the times I, I, I read in the scripture somewhere, uh, it, it says, be ready always for the answer to hope that is within you. Uh, when I was a scout, it said, be ready. And so I'm ready now to present the man of the hour. A gentleman that I've known from a distance, but I've watched him and I've observed him and I sent people to support him. show you right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this man has been called yes, sir. for such a time as this. But not only is he called for such a time as this, he was prepared for such a time as this. Uh, he was honed in the streets of Lawndale. He was honed uh, in education. He was honed in the body politics. But the thing that I remember most about you, Mr. Mayor, that touched me and the one that has my last name, you were on television. And you said during the campaign, I want to assure you all that you'll still have a black mayor, female. And everybody wondered, what's he talking about? And he pointed to his wife, yeah. that you'll still have a black mayor, female. <laughs> At that point, I said, that is a man after my own heart. <laughs> Talk about humility. But he had to go home too. <laughs> but the sincerity of why we're here tonight, uh, this morning, is that this man came into office with a vision. He's been consistent, he's been committed, and he's not wavered in his commitment to all communities. Yes. Yes. Uh, he, he learned that at the knees of some very outstanding political leaders. But the thing that we find missing in our body politic today are people who truly care, who have a heart for community. No disrespect to those here who are stakeholders and shareholders because it takes public and private sector to yes. do these type programs. Yes. But we have a mayor who stepped right in where the former mayor left off and made certain that we didn't miss a beat yes, right. in bringing yes. light right. to Lawndale. Yes. Our honorable mayor, Brandon Johnson, yes. you give him a hand. Well, well, thank you for that introduction, as well as um, the charge that we all have. And I am really grateful and humble uh, to be with you all this afternoon. You know, there's a lot to be said about the west side of Chicago. There's a lot. But one thing that we have to say for sure is that the west side is the best side. You're at home. You're at home. So, I do thank all of you for gathering. And I'm, I'm really thrilled that the West Side, that we get to celebrate. This is an exciting moment for the entire city of Chicago. You know, it's not lost on me that as much as the South Side claims Dr. King with a street, but we know Dr. King lived on the West Side. Yeah. Yeah. Right here in this very community. Yes. And faced a very heavy burden at the time the country was in a very, very difficult political place where those who had wanted to maintain and those of us who were struggling to receive had to fight for everything that we got. And the words of Dr. King still ring true today. If we can figure it out in, in the city of Chicago, we can figure it out anywhere in the world. Yes. So today I'm very hopeful that we are figuring out in the city of Chicago how to make sure that housing is a human right, yeah. which gives hope yeah. for the rest of the world. When I campaigned, I shared a very bold vision um, around more housing, and particularly affordable housing, because I'm convinced more now than ever that housing is truly a human right. And after months of campaigning, the first seven months in office, I'm excited to finally break ground on a 100% affordable housing complex yeah. right here on the yeah. 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 So I want to congratulate Pastor Marvin Hunter, the Grace Memorial Baptist Church. Yeah. You know, Grace at Jerusalem, CDC, and the entire East Lake Management yeah. and Development Corporation yeah. team yeah. for yeah. leading us through yeah. this momentous moment. Go. You know, this $40 million, 65-unit housing development is an example of the power that public and private partnerships can bring to a place like North Lawndale. Amen. So I want to acknowledge the people who have made this possible. Um, the teams at the city's Department of Housing and Chicago Housing Authority who helped with the funding of this project by providing up to $20 million in multi-family housing revenue bonds. Yes. Yeah. 5.5 million dollars in TIF funding yes. and negotiated a sale of seven city-owned parcels. 
and up to $9.2 million in multifamily loan funds to finance the construction of Grace Manor Apartments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This mixed income, mixed use building here in North Lawndale, as I've said, it builds upon the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The dream that he died for. Yes, yes. And lived for. Yes. To see it become a reality for the Lawndale residents. As my mother would say, you can't make me doubt them. <laughs> because I know too much about them. And it is through these partnerships of community and faith and government and private entities that allow us to see a dream become a reality. Thank you, God. And with the burden of housing off the shoulders of many families here, the tenants of Grace Manor can focus on their work, yes. their families, yes. their health and wellness, and live life that every Chicagoan deserves. And furthermore, this building is an equitable, transit-oriented development strategically located at a well-connected um, to the rest of the city of Chicago because it offers CTA bus and train routes. Yes. So we're building community holistically and not in isolation. Yeah. And my administration will continue working towards the dream of our ancestors for more accessible, affordable housing because Chicago is a city that gets to be an example for the rest of the world. And with that in mind, I would like to provide some breaking news today. <laughs> I'm going to announce later today that I'm going to assign an executive order which calls on the leadership of several city departments to streamline the city's development process for affordable housing. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah bro. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's what we need. Because we recognize that Chicago, like other major cities, is grappling with an affordable housing shortage. And we know that the lack of housing and resources, what that does to a community and what it does to its people we all have an obligation to provide resources and infrastructure that our residents need to live and to thrive in the greatest city in the world. But in order to do this, city government has to get out of its own way. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We heard from stakeholders, developers, experts, and residents loud and clear that they are currently experiencing too many pain points with the city's development process because it causes delays and frustration. Yeah and developers are eager to work with the city and build up our neighborhoods, but we must ensure that they are encouraged and enabled to do so. Yes, sir. Yes. So, as part of our larger housing and neighborhood development agenda, I have charged a Southsider, our Chief Operating <laughs> right. Officer, John That's Robertson. Right. <laughs> That's all right. A Westsider, our Deputy Mayor, Kenya Merritt. Yeah and all of our city's leadership yes. to assess and make improvements to our policies and processes to ensure efficiency and reduce the complexity for developers and entrepreneurs without sacrificing the health and safety of builders or our residents. In 90 days, I will require all city departments identified in the executive order that are part of the process to do the following things. Identify key barriers within the housing and commercial development process that leads to increased yes. timelines, cost, and uncertainty. Yes. We will also recommend solutions to accelerate approvals that facilitate housing and commercial development. And we will create a role for a director of process improvement within the mayor's office to make sure that our work is moving forward. This executive order will allow us to move faster and meet the demand more housing. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to signing this executive order later today and cannot wait to see the developments that will rise across the city. Woo. Now, once again, I want to congratulate all that are involved, but we all know that we can't do this alone. I'm grateful that we have our dear sister, um, who is the older person of the 24th Ward, yeah, older woman yeah. Monique Scott. Yeah. Thank you for your leadership. Yeah. We have our commissioner for CHA, Tracy, Tracy, thank you for your leadership. Tracy Scott is here. We also have our new um, uh, commissioner for development and planning yes. department, that's yes. Sierra Boltwright. Yeah, thank you, awesome. Sierra, for you being here. Yeah. We have our state senator, my sister and ally, 
uh, Senator Lakeisha Collins. Thank you for your leadership. And then I see Melva, usually when Melva's around, Dennis Deer's around, Cook County Commissioner, Reverend Dr. Dennis Deer. It is truly an incredible moment to have a 100% affordable housing development in North Lawndale on the Great West Side. We are going to continue to build on this incredible effort to create more affordable housing projects just like this across the city of Chicago. So over these last five months, seven months that I've enjoyed being the mayor of the city of Chicago, I look forward to not just more development, but I look forward to the next 23 years and five months. Thank you all, God bless you. Just a postscript to that beautiful, beautiful message. Elections have consequences. If you didn't know it, you know it now. That executive order means that you have to be an executive to sign it. And we've had many executives that have not signed it. That's right. So let us not take for granted when we put someone in office that they will do the right thing. Yeah. I'm not here to speak, I'm here to announce that we're going to go outside for a groundbreaking ceremony. But I'm constrained to say this. On my way here this morning, I thought about two words. Resilience yes, and Lawndale. Yes, sir. Resilience and Lawndale. And so I want to tell you today, resilience and Lawndale kissed. Mm. Yes, sir. They embraced and they kissed on a road called success. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, and what you are witnessing here, where Dr. King stood, yes. is success yes. because of resilience yes. and Lawndale. Yes. The dark cloud has been here for many, many years, yes. but that cloud is no longer here. Thanks to this mayor, Give him this hand. honorable mayor. Give him a round of applause. down in front of you, Lalo. Now, true, typically in West Side fashion, usually our outfits coordinate. So these hats here, I thought they would be purple or something. See, you got, there's the one. There you go. Hat that guy. Very purple. All right, I'll have everybody grab a shovel. On the count of three, I just want a ceremonial hold the dirt. So, one, two, three. Looking at the cameras in the center. Right here, camera one, camera one. Right here. Thank you so much. Pick up some dirt. Hands up, you have just a little dirt. There you are. We're all good? Okay, and then on the count of three, we'll just toss the dirt a little. Okay. <laughs> outside? Yes, outside. One, two, three. Cool. There you go.